our next algorithm we want to talk about is depth first search. This algorithm is concise enough that we don't necessarily need the English written code. This works on a much the same principle where we're going to build a spanning tree and we're going to color the vertices. We're going to keep track of pointers. The one thing we're not keeping track of is distance. Instead, we're going to keep track of time. And this time thing is going to seem a little weird. Once we start running the algorithm, we'll see what happens with it. As a first pass, though, it does not seem like a thing that will be useful. This is going to let us know when did we start exploring a vertex and when did we finish exploring a vertex. We're going to have two times, discovery time and finishing time. So u.d here is the discovery time and u.f is the finishing time. If you remember, I described depth for a search before we get into the code as we start at a vertex and choose a child, then choose a child of that and a child of that and a child of that, and then you might have to backtrack up. So we're going to choose a child, then occasionally backtrack up if we run out of places to go. This idea of backtracking might naturally lead you to think we can do this recursively, which is what we're going to do. This is going to be a recursive algorithm, which explores as deep in the graph as possible, depth first search, and then slowly backtracks out from that location. So how do we do that? Just as before, we initialize all the vertices. And then we start at some vertex u. Notice here we didn't have a starting vertex. A depth first search is often useful to explore an entire graph, even if it is not connected. So for each vertex, we're going to start trying to explore from there. So this lets us guaranteed explore the entire graph. The bulk of what this algorithm does is stuck in DFS visit. Almost everything it does, it turns out. So when we visit a vertex, that's what we were doing inside of the while loop in the other example. When we visit that vertex, we say we just discovered it, we color it gray. And then for every adjacent vertex, we say if we have yet to discover that vertex, we visit it. So we discover you, and then the, we check the adjacency list. And if there is anything adjacent, we visit it. We try to immediately start exploring a new vertex the second we find one that we have not visited yet. Once we finish visiting it, we say we color it black, and then we update the finishing time. We'll deal with the time more when we do our example. But the idea is you're searching through the adjacency list for any vertex. The second you find one, you're going to try to explore that vertex and you're going to keep exploring and, and then backtrack up once you finish that vertex. So this will create a stack for us, a recursive stack, which will slowly get traversed. We'll have a different video where we visualize what is happening with that stack. We'll try to just pay attention to how we run this algorithm by hand for now though. Just as we did before, we are going to try and run an example to see how this algorithm works. Just as with breadth first search, we're going to try to do at least a little heuristic analysis of what does this algorithm do. We're going to do this at a very high level. Step one is easy. It's we need to initialize every vertex. So that takes n time. Unavoidably, we're going to run through every single vertex if there are n vertices, as we said before. So if we let n be the number of vertices and m be the number of edges, then that'll take n time. The next loop runs n times. But most of the time, it's not going to do anything. It's not going to do anything because all of the recursive heavy lifting is being done by DFS visit. So the way we're going to think about this, and this is not obvious at all, is we're going to ask the question of how many times is DFS visit called? So how many times is DFS visit called? Our first observation is that regardless of where it gets called, DFS or DFS visit, it is always stuck inside of a loop that says, if a vertex is white, visit. No matter what, it gets called on every vertex by just DFS. It is guaranteed every vertex will try to get called, unless it's not colored white. The only way a vertex is not colored white is by DFS visit itself. So unavoidably, it will visit at least every vertex once, no matter what. It has to visit every vertex because we're checking for every single vertex. And the only way the color of vertex can be not white is if it was done in DFS visit. So it, visit, it visits at least every vertex once. At least every vertex. Once. And if we look at DFS visit, the very first thing it does before it contemplates recursion, doing anything, is set the color of a vert of the vertex you're exploring to be gray. So it can only get called exactly once. 
it visits each vertex at least once and exactly once it turns out because it's never going to get called on you again once we color it gray because it can only get called if it's white so it visits each vertex once and exactly once so it visits each vertex once and exactly once let's update our sentence we it visits each vertex once and exactly once each vertex once and exactly once. Just to specify that, it's not just that it visits it at most once, it's very specifically it visits each vertex. That's it. And what does DFS visit? Ignoring the recursive call, which we're already figuring out how many times that occurs, it does the exact same thing as breadth first search. It runs through the adjacency list. So everything here, ignoring the recursive call, is degree of u time. So, just like breadth first search, it runs over every vertex in the vertices, and it takes degree of u time. So that's 2m, just like we saw with breadth first search. Unsurprising, they're doing the same thing. They're exploring an entire graph. Also unsurprising is that the runtime for DFS is in theta of n plus m, just as the other one was, because we do... This initialization step, which takes n time, and DFS visit it takes as a total amount of time by adding up the cost of each run. We're not caring what order it occurs, because that would be complicated to figure out. We just know it's going to get called in every vertex, and while it's getting called in every vertex, it has to run through that for loop. That's the only main contributor for the cost. So, the DFS visit's total time of every single call of DFS visit is 2m, and the initialization takes n time. Therefore, the total running time is n plus m, just as it was for breadth first search. If you want to do a similar analysis, you may have learned at some point that recursion can always be implemented via a stack. At least a single recursive call especially can. So you could re-implement this with a stack and see that it looks almost identical to breadth first search, just with a stack instead. And then you could analyze the runtime that way if you want further convincing that this takes n plus m time.